In this video, we are going to talk about prefabs. Now, Lee, generally speaking, what's prefab? A prefab is a container or a way to group assets and their settings together mm -hmm. in sort of a template that we can use to instantiate multiple copies of this grouping of assets. It's a really succinct way to put it. I like the word instantiate. Make sure you remember the word instantiate with prefabs because that's really what it's all about. What you're going to be doing when you create a prefab is taking a series of objects, and I'm just going to represent my objects as little circles. These could be anything. These could be models. They could be textures. They could be scripts. Uh, anything at all, really. And you can group them all together under a single heading. Now, if you just take a look at it as circles and squares, it's, it, may, it probably doesn't sink in right away. A classic example of prefabs. And actually, hang on. Stop. Before I even get into specific examples, I want to mention this, just kind of throw this out there. There are really two ways that you're going to be applying prefabs. And my little writing utensil got a little bit wonky on me there. The first way is as a level designer. And this is the one that we're going to be exploring pretty much in this video. Uh, this is how you can take various parts of your level, various game objects, combine them under a single container, a prefab, and then make multiple copies of that prefab throughout your level so that if you make changes to one, those changes can propagate to all of the various copies of that prefab. There's a second way that I can't really get into but I'll talk about at the end of this video, and that is using uh, prefabs as a game coder or a game programmer. Right, this is a way to dynamically instantiate prefabs at runtime via scripts. Now, that said, both of these two ways are essentially, if you really, really boil it down, they're the exact same thing. The difference is that as a level designer, you're manually dragging and dropping a prefab into your scene to get stuff positioned. As a, a programmer, you're causing that behavior, that instantiation behavior, to be done through code during gameplay at runtime. Now let's talk a little bit about prefabs kind of at the, the conceptual level because really a second ago I started off just by saying you could think of it as a collection of objects all under a single group and that's all well and good but let's think of something just a little bit more practical and we'll start off from the level designer sense because we can actually demonstrate this and we will here in just a moment. But a classic example, something you're going to hear people uh, probably refer to a lot when they talk about prefabs, are streetlights. It's just such an easy one to discuss because think about a streetlight for a video game. I mean, what is it? It's going to be a 3D model, and I'm going to draw like the worst streetlight ever. In fact, I'll just keep it a little stick. Uh, maybe a separate model at the end for the little light source. It's going to actually have to have some kind of a light in it. So you could put a little Unity light in it. Maybe there's even a little sound effect. As you get close to it, it has like a little hum or something. I know there's all kinds of different ways. You get crazy. You put a particle system of moths flying around sure. it. Sure. Oh, why not? You get just little tiny dots of moths that just kind of float around it and do all kinds of cool stuff. You could, you could just go on and on and on with the various things that could be added to a street light. Now, let's say you've now got a city street scene. Well, you're going to need a lot of street lights. And while you could just duplicate that one light over and over and over again, you could just build it out of all these parts and just duplicate it. What happens, here, let's just draw a quick example. I don't want to spend like forever drawing, but, so let's say three and let's say that represents 300. Uh, let's say your director comes through and they're like, Ugh, you know, you've got too many moths and I really would like to see a lot more orange in the street light. And they're a little squarish. Can you go ahead and just round all those out for me? Yeah, that'd be great. And then he, he walks out of the office. And if you have made all of these as separate objects, you now have a whole lot of work to do. Right. You'd probably be looking at the want ads for a new job going, I don't want to do this. It very well could be. But if you've made all of these into a single prefab, and I'll just draw this like a box that contains everything, this prefab could be instanced multiple copies of this prefab could exist at all these locations so you just go back to the original make the appropriate changes and those automatically get sent down to all of the children all at once so making any of those changes your director wants is instantaneous now the really cool thing about prefabs is not just that it's a single directional relationship from the master down to the children you can also make a change to a child and turn that into an entirely unique object if you so desire 
Uh, you could have maybe a broken. Uh, I, well, I don't necessarily want to go through you know remodeling it, but maybe you just got like a different street light that maybe this one's got a trash can that's parented to it, and it's got you know some guy leaning up against it. I don't know. It could have anything. You have you make some some fundamental change that makes it different somehow from all of its friends, and it could you could say all right this is technically no longer a prefab no longer listening to the master. Then if you make any changes to the master they'll propagate to everybody, but not to this one lonely guy over here in the corner. Then later on you could think well you know maybe I made some change to this guy, that just looks awesome and I want all of my streetlights to be like that. You can actually send this. It, uh, Unity will remember that this was once a prefab that was listening to its master, and it will allow you to send all of your changes back up to the master, save them out so that they then get sent back down to all the other children as well. And there's another feature that we get along with this is let's say your doctor came in and said, you know, I want a rounded street light, I want a trash can down there, and you do all the work on just the one, and before you send it up to the prefab, you have your director come over and look at it and go, what were you thinking? That's mm -hmm. even worse. You have the ability to revert back to the original with That's a click true. of a button. Yeah, you could say all these changes that I've made, um, let's just go ahead and ditch those, and it will go all the way back to that original prefab, retrieve the data and send it back down and put you right back where you started. So some very cool stuff. Now, I do want to mention that a lot of these features will be explored much more thoroughly in a separate section entitled Working with Prefabs. That's where we're actually going to show you, walk you very carefully through the creation process, through uh, handling all of the data routing for uh, sending data out to the children, making a change, sending it back up to the master, reverting back to an original, all that kind of thing is handled in a separate video series. But I'm not going to let you walk away empty-handed. We are going to take a look at creating a very basic prefab right here in this video. Now, in this scene, I have a little campground. So you see we've got these little benches and we've got a tent. And then we have a fire pit. And the fire pit's actually fairly complicated in that it has a flame object that includes a fire sound effect. An inner core, an outer core, smoke, so three different particle systems, and a light source. So it's actually emitting some kind of light. Now all of that has been parented together under an object called flame, and then that in itself has been parented to an object called fire pit. Now what if I wanted to take all of this and turn it into a camp object? That would be easy enough, but what if I want that camp to be instantiatable and redeployable throughout, uh, throughout various parts of my scene? or throughout other scenes as well, should I need to. Well, I can select my fire pit. I can select my tent. I can select bench one, two, and three. Now, just for, for my sake, because it's just how I like to work, I would like to parent all of these under a single game object that I would call camp before I even made a prefab. And that's just my, that's my habit more than anything else. So let's hit control shift N, and that'll make a brand new game object and we'll talk more about game objects in a separate video we'll call this camp and then let's just start parenting objects to it so I'll grab bench one two and three and I'll drag those onto the camp object grab the fire pit drag that in as well and I'll grab the tent and I'll also drag that in again that's just an organizational thing that I prefer now let's turn this camp into a prefab now, I already have a folder here inside my project called My Prefabs, but let's just say you had to create your own folder from scratch. So let's go to Create, Make Folder, and it's ending up underneath My Prefabs. You could do that, or you could just pull it out so that you see like the little line here in between folders, and that unparents it, so it's just its own thing. And let's call this Zach Prefab. Now, with this folder selected, I can go to Create, Prefab, and that makes a brand new empty prefab that has nothing in it. And let's name this Camp, like so. Now I can just grab my Camp object up here, which contains all of these other objects, and just drag it right on top of my prefab. This is now a prefabricated object that I can do anything I want with. So just uh, as kind of a matter of demonstration, I could come to an entirely different part of our scene. 
So I've got this really crazy area with all this red grass, and this is all from a, a separate demo in this video series. And I could grab this camp, drag it out of my project view, and place it right over here. And then maybe rotate it around. Actually, can we find a better spot for it? I'm going to delete that. All that grass is getting in my way. How about, about right here? It won't be perfect, but it'll get the point across. So we'll drag that in. We'll move it up a little bit. So it's a hovering camp, very special <laughs> kind of camp. Now, just uh, really quickly, I will show one quick thing, and then uh, we will jump away, I promise. I do want to show that if you make a change to your master camp, uh, that it will affect all the others. Actually, we're going to do that in a, in a kind of a special way. Let's say that here on our floating camp, for whatever reason, we get rid of one of these uh, one of these benches. So we expand this out, grab, say, bench number three, and we delete that. Notice we get a little warning here. It says this action will lose the prefab connection. That was that connection we were talking about when we were drawing stuff out in Photoshop. Are you sure you wish to continue? Sure. Go ahead and continue. Notice it is no longer highlighted blue. Right, it just means it's lost its link to its original prefab. That's right. The one that still has the link is highlighted in blue. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of zoom out a little bit. And let's get... I'm going to try to position the camera where I can see both of these. You'll see that one is missing its bench. The other one has its bench. I'm going to select the prefab that we deleted the bench out of. And up here inside my inspector, I have the apply button. As soon as I click that, take a look at what happened to the original camp. It lost its bench too. Because that change was sent back up to the prefab, which then propagated out to, the, uh, to any other instances of that object. And you'll notice that now both of the camps are blue. They both have the connection and everything is just fine. Now, conversely, and I know I'm, I'm pushing it, I'm going a little bit far again, but that's okay, just this once, just humor me. Uh, I could maybe grab, oh, I don't know, let's grab bench number two. So we're, just, we're in a bench deleting mood and we can delete that. And you know, so we're working with that and after a while we're thinking, you know, it was just so nice having that bench there and now I miss it. And as Lee was saying earlier on, you can grab that original data and you can get it back. So notice I clicked reconnect and that switched over to revert now and that brought back my bench. So if you make a change that you don't like to a prefab, you can bring that back and now you'll notice that my prefab is once again highlighted blue. Now all of this and more is actually going to be explored in our working with uh, prefabs videos. But this just allows you to see uh, kind of like a base example of working with prefabs from a level designer standpoint. But I did mention that I was going to talk about prefabs from a programmer standpoint as well. Because again, prefabs can be used, as you just saw, for simplifying the level design process by taking several different uh, level assets and combining them all under a single instantiatable heading. But they're also very useful for programmers as well. Now, a really good example of this would be a gun or a weapon, like for a shooter style game. So let's say you have a grenade launcher. So real quick, I'm gonna draw the most amazing grenade launcher ever. And so it's got some cool lines and designs and things. So here's the, the end of it, and it has to shoot grenades. That's obviously what a grenade launcher does. So what goes into a grenade? Well, your grenade is gonna have a projectile, which is gonna be a 3D model. So yes, this is in 3D. Uh, it's going to have a texture with maybe some sort of cool stripe on it. It's going to have a particle system for like a smoke trail because you need that. You got to see that arc of smoke. It's just so satisfying, you know. Right. Maybe it's got uh, a light out the back, if, you know, like it ignited or something. You could have another system that is a part of it, such that on impact it has another particle system that explodes out. It could have its sound effect, or it would have its sound effect actually. You have multiple sound effects. Maybe, Maybe you need the thump when it gets fired. That's right. You have the, the firing sound. You have the explosion sound. You can have a light that takes uh, that is instantiated as soon as it hits. And all of this would be part of a single prefab. Everything you see here would be in one prefab that you could call something like grenade projectile right along with a bunch of scripts to make this all happen that's right it, it wouldn't just be the objects themselves everything I'm talking about would be related to scripting and writing some programming code to make all of this feasible however in your main game program you could have a method that wh whose only job was to instantiate projectiles fired from weapons 
And so when a player hits the fire button while they have this weapon selected, all of this prefab is instantiated into the level in one fell swoop. Right. It will be instantiated at the position of the player with its rotation mm -hmm. all set to go. And the moment that you pull the trigger, it comes into being, the script takes over, and it's all on its own. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it at all. And then as soon as its routine is done and it's it's fired, it's exploded, all the particles are gone, that prefab can actually be deleted out from memory because you don't see it anymore. You could fire your grenade multiple times, one, two, three, real quickly in rapid succession, and each one of those grenades would be a different instantiation of this grenade profile uh, projectile prefab. Now, that's something that I have to discuss more at the <clears throat> excuse me at the conceptual level because we're not really going into scripting and whatnot here in these videos but it is important for you to know uh, the importance of that sort of thing so that is going to wrap up this video over prefabs thank you very much for watching